Dana, Devanagari, Dana is a Sanskrit and Pali word that connotes the virtue of generosity, charity or giving of alms in Indian philosophies. It is alternatively transliterated as dana. In Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism and Sikhism, Dana is the practice of cultivating generosity. It can take the form of giving to an individual in distress or need. It can also take the form of philanthropic public projects that empower and help many. According to historical records, Dana is an ancient practice in Indian traditions, tracing back to Vedic traditions. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Hinduism. Dana, Sanskrit, Dana means giving, often in the context of donation and charity. In other contexts, such as rituals, it can simply refer to the act of giving something. Dana is related to and mentioned in ancient texts with concepts of parapakara, parapakara which means benevolent deed, helping others, dakshina, dakshina which means gift or fee one can afford, and bhiksha, bhiksa which means alms. Dana has been defined in traditional texts as any action of relinquishing the ownership of what one considered or identified as one's own, and investing the same in a recipient without expecting anything in return. While dana is typically given to one person or family, Hinduism also discusses charity or giving aimed at public benefit, sometimes called utsarga. This aims at larger projects such as building a rest house, school, drinking water or irrigation well, planting trees, and building care facility among others. <laughs> Dana in Hindu scriptures The Rigveda has the earliest discussion of Dana in the Vedas. The Rigveda relates it to Satya truth and in another hymn points to the guilt one feels from not giving to those in need. It uses da, the root of word dana, in its hymns to refer to the act of giving to those in distress. Ralph T. H. Griffith, for example, translates Book 10, Hymn 117 of the Rig Veda as follows. The Upanishads, composed before 500 BCE, present some of the earliest Upanishadic discussion of dana. Brihadaranyaka Upanishad, in verse 5.2.3, states that three characteristics of a good, developed person are self-restraint compassion or love for all sentient life dhyā, and charity Tetetrayam six to mam danam diamiti learn three cardinal virtues, self-restraint, charity and compassion for all life. Chandogya Upanishad, Book 3, similarly, states that a virtuous life requires, tapas asceticism, dana charity, arjava straightforwardness, ahimsa non-injury to all sentient beings and satyavakana truthfulness. Bhagavad Gita describes the right and wrong forms of dana in verses 17.20 through 17.22. It defines sattvakam good, enlightened, pure charity, in verse 17.20, as one given without expectation of return, at the proper time and place, and to a worthy person. It defines rajas passion, ego-driven, active charity, in verse 17.21, as one given with the expectation of some return, or with a desire for fruits and results, or grudgingly. It defines tamas ignorant, dark, destructive charity, in verse 17.22, as one given with contempt, to unworthy persons, at a wrong place and time. In Book 17, Bhadwad Gita suggests steadiness in sattvakam dana, or the good form of charity is better, and that tamas should be avoided. These three psychological categories are referred to as the gunas in Hindu philosophy. The Adi Parva of the Hindu epic Mahabharata, in chapter 91, states that a person must first acquire wealth by honest means, then embark on charity, be hospitable to those who come to him, never inflict pain on any living being, and share a portion with others whatever he consumes. In chapter 87 of Adi Parva, it calls sweet speech and refusal to use harsh words or wrong others even if you have been wronged, as a form of charity. In the Vana Parva, chapter 194, the Mahabharata recommends that one must conquer the mean by charity, the untruthful by truth, the wicked by forgiveness, and dishonesty by honesty. Anishasana Parva in chapter 58, recommends public projects as a form of dana. It discusses the building of drinking water tanks for people and cattle as a noble form of giving, as well as giving of lamps for lighting dark public spaces. In later sections of chapter 58, it describes planting public orchards, with trees that give fruits to strangers and shade to travelers, as meritorious acts of benevolent charity. In chapter 59 of Book 13 of the Mahabharata, Yudhishthira and Bhishma discuss the best and lasting gifts between people. 
an assurance unto all creatures with love and affection and abstention from every kind of injury, acts of kindness and favor done to a person in distress, whatever gifts are made without the givers ever thinking of them as gifts made by him, constitute, O chief of Bharata's race, the highest and best of gifts Dana. The Bhagavata Purana discusses when Dana is proper and when it is improper. In Book 8, Chapter 19, Verse 36 it states that charity is inappropriate if it endangers and cripples modest livelihood of one's biological dependence or of one's own. Charity from surplus income above that required for modest living is recommended in the Puranas. Hindu scriptures exist in many Indian languages. For example, the Tarukural, written between 200 BCE and 400 CE, is one of the most cherished classics on Hinduism written in a South Indian language. It discusses charity, dedicating Chapter 23 of Book 1 on virtues to it. Tarukural suggests charity is necessary for an virtuous life and happiness. He states in Chapter 23, "...giving to the poor is true charity, all other giving expects some return." Great, indeed, is the power to endure hunger. Greater still is the power to relieve others' hunger. Quote, semicolon, quote. Giving alms is a great reward in itself to one who gives. Quote, dot. In chapter 101, he states, Believing wealth is everything, yet giving away nothing, is a miserable state of mind. Quote, semicolon, quote. Vast wealth can be a curse to one who neither enjoys it nor gives to the worthy. Like the Mahabharata, Tarukural also extends the concept of charity to deeds body, words speech, and thoughts mind. It states that a brightly beaming smile, the kindly light of loving eye, and saying pleasant words with sincere heart is a form of charity that every human being should strive to give. <laughs> Dana in rituals Dana is also used to refer to rituals. For example, in a Hindu wedding, Kanyadana, Kanyadana refers to the ritual where a father gives his daughter's hand in marriage to the groom, after asking the groom to promise that he will never fail in his pursuit of dharma moral and lawful life, artha wealth, and kama love. The groom promises to the bride's father, and repeats his promise three times in presence of all gathered as witness. Other types of charity includes donating means of economic activity and food source. For example, godana donation of a cow, budana budana donation of land, and vidyadana or jnanadana, vidyadana jnanadana sharing knowledge and teaching skills, aushadadana, asadadana charity of care for the sick and diseased, abhyadana, abhyadana giving freedom from fear asylum, protection to someone facing imminent injury, and anadana, anadana giving food to the poor, needy and all visitors. The effect of dana Charity is held as a noble deed in Hinduism, to be done without expectation of any return from those who receive the charity. Some texts reason, referring to the nature of social life, that charity is a form of good karma that affects one's future circumstances and environment, and that good charitable deeds leads to good future life because of the reciprocity principle. Other Hindu texts, such as Vyasa Samhita, state that reciprocity may be innate in human nature and social functions but dana is a virtue in itself, as doing good lifts the nature of one who gives. The texts do not recommend charity to unworthy recipients or where charity may harm or encourage injury to or by the recipient. Dana, thus, is a dharmic act, requires idealistic normative approach, and has spiritual and philosophical context. The donor's intent and responsibility for diligence about the effect of dana on the recipient is considered as important as the dana itself. While the donor should not expect anything in return with dana, the donor is expected to make an effort to determine the character of the recipient, likely return to the recipient and to the society. Some medieval era authors state that dana is best done with shraddha faith, which is defined as being in goodwill, cheerful, welcoming the recipient of the charity and giving without anasua finding faults in the recipient. These scholars of Hinduism, states Kohler, suggest that charity is most effective when it is done with delight, a sense of unquestioning hospitality, where the dana ignores the short-term weaknesses as well as the circumstances of the recipient and takes a long-term view. <laughs> dana in historical records 
Al-Biruni, the Persian historian, who visited and lived in India for 16 years from about 1017, mentions the practice of charity and almsgiving among Hindus as he observed during his stay. He wrote, "...it is obligatory with them Hindus every day to give alms as much as possible." After the taxes, there are different opinions on how to spend their income. Some destine one-ninth of it for alms. Others divide this income after taxes into four portions. One-fourth is destined for common expenses, the second for liberal works of a noble mind, the third for alms, and the fourth for being kept in reserve. Satrams, called Choltri, Dharamsala or Chathrams in parts of India, have been one expression of Hindu charity. Satrams are shelters rest houses for travellers and the poor, with many serving water and free food. These were usually established along the roads connecting major Hindu temple sites in South Asia as well as near major temples. Hindu temples served as charitable institutions. Burton Stein states that South Indian temples collected donations from devotees. During the Chola dynasty and Vijayanagara Empire periods in 1st millennium through first half of 2nd millennium AD. These dana were then used to feed people in distress as well as fund public projects such as irrigation and land reclamation. Hindu treatises on Dana Mataksara by Vijñanasvara is an 11th century canonical discussion and commentary on Dana, composed under the patronage of Chalukya dynasty. The discussion about charity is included in its thesis on Akara. Moral conduct. Major Sanskrit treatises that discuss ethics, methods, and rationale for charity and alms giving in Hinduism include, states Maria Heim, the 12th century Dana Kanda, Book of Giving, by Laxmidhara of Kanauj, the 12th century Dana Sagara, Sea of Giving, by Balalasena of Bengal, and the 14th century sub book Danakanda in Kadurvargasintamani, The Gem of the Four Aims of Human Life, by Hemadiri of Devagiri, modern Dalitabad, Maharashtra. The first two are few hundred page treatises each, while the third is over a thousand page compendium on charity, from a region that is now part of modern day eastern Maharashtra and Telangana. The text influenced Hindus of Deccan region and South India from 14th to 19th centuries. <laughs> <laughs> Buddhism Dana as a formal religious act is directed specifically to a monastic or spiritually developed person. In Buddhist thought, it has the effect of purifying and transforming the mind of the giver. Generosity developed through giving leads to experience of material wealth and possibly being reborn in happy states. In the Pali canons Digajanu Sutta, generosity denoted there by the Pali word kaga, which can be synonymous with dana, is identified as one of the four traits conditioning happiness and wealth in the next life. Conversely, lack of giving leads to unhappy states and poverty. Dana leads to one of the paramitas or perfections, the dana paramita. This can be characterized by unattached and unconditional generosity, giving and letting go. Buddhists believe that giving without seeking anything in return leads to greater spiritual wealth. Moreover, it reduces the acquisitive impulses that ultimately lead to continued suffering from egotism. Jainism Dana is, as with Hindu texts like Mataksara and Vani Purana and in Buddhist texts, described as a virtue and duty in Jainism. It is considered an act of compassion, and must be done with no desire for material gain. Four types of dana are discussed in the texts of Jainism: Ahara dana, donation of food; Asada dana, donation of medicine; Jnana dana, donation of knowledge; and Abhaya dana, giving of protection or freedom from fear, asylum to someone under threat. Dana is one of ten means to gain positive karma in the soteriological theories of Jainism. Medieval era texts of Jainism dedicate a substantial portion of their discussions to the need and virtue of dana. Sikhism Dana, called Van Chako, is considered one of three duties of Sikhs. The duty entails sharing part of one's earnings with others, by giving to charity and caring for others. Examples of Dana in Sikhism include selfless service and langar. See also 
alms charity practice economic anthropology gift economy niyama paramita philanthropy virtue tithe yavanaraja inscription a 1st century bce donation inscription from mathura topic notes and references Topic. Further reading Maria Heim 2004, Theories of the Gift in Medieval South Asia, Hindu, Buddhist, and Jain, Routledge, ISBN 978-0521605137 Vijay Nath 1987, Dana, Gift System in Ancient India, c. 600 BC, c. AD 300, A Socioeconomic Perspective, Munsharam Manoharlal Publishers, ISBN 978-8121500548. External links Philanthropy in India, K.A.N. Singh, Queensland University of Technology, Australia 2002. Dana, The Practice of Giving. Selected Essays edited by Bhikkhu Bodhi Revealing Indian Philanthropy M. Candigrail et al. UBS, Switzerland 2013.